What's up guys? So owning a home has been generally ingrained in American culture since the 1950s. And usually when you buy a home, not only does it double as a place to live, but it's known as a great investment as well as a source of wealth. But these days there's a narrative going around on TikTok as well as other social media websites saying that buying a home these days won't make you rich anymore like it once used to. So in today's video, I wanted to take a deeper look into home appreciation and see if it's actually slowed down in the United States. And if it has slowed down, should we still be buying a home in 2024? I'm going to answer that today and also answer if I would still buy a home in 2024. So typically when it comes to buying homes as a financial asset, there are two reasons why you might want to do this. The first is that it's an asset that you can actually live in. By living in the home, you're hoping that the price of the home appreciates as well so that one day you can pass it on to your kids and actually make some money on the home value itself. The second reason to own a home as an asset is that possibly one day if you're ever in need of cash, you can borrow against it. The idea that homes appreciate have been true for the most part. So in the United States, the real estate market has a long and reliable history of appreciating home prices over time. Some regions, as you may know, probably appreciate much faster than others, depending on where you settled and how the industries have evolved in those certain areas. But even if you aren't in the United States, the annual return on housing in 16 Western countries between 1870 and 2015 was more than 7% when adjusted for inflation, while the return on equities was just under 7%. So that's a pretty dang good argument for investing in homes. But in terms of the United States specifically, let's take a look at the rate of home appreciation for the 15 year period starting from 1970, as well as the 30 year period starting from 1970. That way we can figure out the rate of appreciation of buying a home in the 70s when it was the golden age, and then compare it to the period of now, which is the 2000s and the 2010s. With so many people feeling like housing appreciation just isn't there anymore, what does the data actually say? So looking at homes as investments back in 1970, the average sales price of a home in 19 1970 quarter one was $27,000. Now the average sales price of a home in quarter four of 2023, so 53 years later, was $492,300 according to the Federal Reserve of Economic Data. Now, since we have these two data points, we can actually figure out the compound annual growth rate or CAGR as some like to call it. In simple terms, CAGR tells us how fast something is growing every single year, taking into account how the growth builds up over time as well. So let me give you a fun example that makes it a little easier to understand. Let's pretend you have a magic bean that grows into a beanstalk. You find a nice patch of soil to plant it in and you expect it to grow slowly in the beginning, but then faster later on. So here's what that data looks like. In the first year, your beanstalk grows to 10 feet tall. In year two, it grows to 15 feet tall. And then in years three through five, it grows to 25, 40, and 60 feet tall. To calculate the compound annual growth rate of the beanstalk, we actually need the following equation. Since this is rather complicated, I'm just gonna fill it out for you. And therefore you can see that the beanstalk has a compound annual growth rate of 42.7%. In other words, it grew about 42.7% per year. All right, so how does this relate to homes? Well, if we can compare the CAGR of one time period versus another, we can basically assess whether or not home appreciation rates have been increasing or decreasing during those periods. Using the two data points that we had from earlier, the 1970 home prices, as well as the 2023 home prices, we can actually see that the compound annual growth rate here of this entire period was 5.63%. For this calculation, calculation, I just used an online calculator. That's a much easier way to figure out compound annual growth rate rather than trying to do it by hand every single time. So now let's actually compare the most recent period, the last 15 years from 2009 until now, because that's going to give us a good sense of how housing appreciation has been, at least since the financial crisis. The CAGR from 2009 until now is approximately 4.13%. This means that homes are appreciating at a rate that is 1.5% lower than the entire time period from 1970 to 2020. I did some further digging on the 15 year periods from 1970 and onwards, and you can actually see the results here. From 1970 to 1985, the CAGR was 9.01%. From 1985 to 2000, the CAGR was 4.93%. From 2000 to 2015, the CAGR was 3.66%. This severely underperformed the entire period from 1970 to 2023, as well as the benchmark of the 16 Western countries that I mentioned earlier on in this video. So just by looking at this data, we can see that the home appreciation rates have not not been as good as they used to be in the 1970s. But some of you are gonna be quick to point out to me, well, Humphrey, the rate of appreciation from 2000 to 2015 was 3.66% and from 2009 to present was 4.13%, which means that the rate of home appreciation has been much better in the recent years. And while that is true, I do think that period of 2000 to 2015 was being dragged down by the year of 2008 when everything crashed. And therefore, if we really want a fair comparison of the most recent period to that period, then we 
actually need 15 years of data from 2015 and onwards, which we don't really have yet. Still though, I think if we just compare the price appreciation, at least in the last 15 years, it doesn't really compare to anything that we used to see in the 70s and 80s. So yes, while they aren't appreciating as much anymore, what should you be doing? Should you still invest in a home or would it be better off just to rent? There actually are some merits to owning a home despite slow appreciation. So according to the 2020 survey of consumer finances, quote, homeowners have a net worth that is typically more than 40 times greater than their rent or counterparts. That reinforces the idea that owning a home is a smart financial move. Homeowners had a median net worth of $255,000 in 2019, and renters had a median net worth of just $6,300. And according to a paper by the National Bureau of Economic Research, housing wealth is on average roughly one half of national wealth in a typical economy. So is this percentage actually justified? Why is it that wealth is so correlated with home ownership to the point where the median net worth of a homeowner is 40 times that of a renter. There are a ton of internet sleuths out there on Reddit and other types of forums, crunching the numbers and showing you that renting and investing could be the better choice. But it seems that the data shows differently. And before you say, well, Humphrey, you idiot, of course, renters don't have a high net worth. They're renting. And so therefore they don't own a home. You might also point out that the data is skewed because the homeowners that actually own a home have a higher net worth because of the simple fact that they own the asset. I definitely thought of that, but if renting and investing was the far superior choice, then the renters theoretically should have been investing this entire time and have somewhat of a comparable net worth to those who actually own homes. But that actually is not the case and a 40X difference is quite a lot. So I actually have a few theories on why this is happening. First, homes are like forced savings accounts. Once you put the down payment in and you're locked into a 30 year mortgage, you're going to keep making payments on that mortgage and you're gonna be building up equity in the home that you have. Also, it's very hard to liquidate a house. When it comes to the stock market and investing, if you were to really get emotional and really need that cash ASAP, you can be out of your complete investment in the stock market within, let's say, 60 seconds. All it takes for you is to log into your brokerage account, click a few buttons, click sell, and then wire transfer that money back to your bank account. With a home, it's gonna keep you behaviorally honest because of how much friction there is in actually selling a home. You gotta find an agent, prep your home for listing, actually list the property, have open houses. Then when a buyer finally offers you, let's say, a good offer for your home, it might take 30 days for that to actually close. There's a lot of friction when it comes to liquidating your house. And if I took two emotional investors, but one was invested in real estate versus one that was invested in the stock market, I would say that the person in the stock market has an easier time probably paper handing their investments. Rather, the person in the real estate sector they might have a harder time selling their investments. So naturally they're going to stick with their investments because it's more of a forced savings approach. The next theory I have is that it's pretty hard to own a home in America. You typically need at least two years of employment history in order to actually qualify for a mortgage. You need a low debt to income ratio and you have to have enough money saved for the down payment. You also have to budget for home ownership costs like taxes, insurance, and maintenance. In general, people that own homes have to pay attention to their finances more because they have to worry about the different things that they need to pay for on a month to month basis. Compare that to a renter who only really needs to figure out how much they are paying in rent every month and make sure that they have enough money for that. So while a sophisticated renter could come out ahead by renting and then investing the difference compared to someone buying the home, I would say that's usually the exception and not the rule. When it comes to buying a home, you really just need to run the numbers for yourself. There's so many ways to finance a home that it could potentially return a higher return than the stock market, but that really depends on your loan terms as well as the type of interest rate you're getting and so on. And then on the flip side, if you were investing and then renting instead, it really depends on what you are investing in that will dictate your returns. I have a video on renting versus buying a home on the channel right now. And that's actually from last year where I summarized the fact that mortgage rates being so high in the US, it's actually better to rent than to buy in most of the country. However, my point was that if you're planning on staying in a place for longer than five to eight years, it actually might make more sense to buy a home. So if you're interested in that video, I will leave a link down below for it that you can check out after this video. Now, I personally still would like to own a home one day, maybe this year or maybe the next coming years. But the idea is that there are three reasons for this. The first is that having a home as an asset will diversify my overall portfolio mix. Right now, my entire net worth is mostly in stocks. So therefore, adding real estate to my portfolio is going to be a great way to round out my portfolio. However, I do acknowledge that this is not the case for most people. Many people will have the exact opposite situation as I do, which is that they have all their net worth in a home and then basically nothing in stocks. The second reason I'd rather buy 
buy than to rent is the fact of stability. When you're renting, it's rather unstable. If your landlord ever wants to raise the prices of your rent, then you're kind of at the whim of your landlord. At least with a mortgage payment, you know what you're gonna get, especially if you get a 30 year fixed one. Lastly, when it comes to renting a house, you can't really customize your house. So if you want to make modifications in certain rooms, you probably wouldn't want to because eventually you're just gonna move out of that place versus when you buy a home, it's kind of more permanent and there's that pride of ownership. Those are just some of the benefits that I see in owning a home, but there are some other really popular benefits out there as well. One thing that I like to point out is that a home can be a big source of fulfillment for you and your family. You can create a lot of memories in your homes. You can raise your kids. You can pass it down to your kids eventually. And if you believe that owning your home gives you some peace of mind and fulfillment, who am I to say that that's a bad investment? If anything, it could actually be the best investment of your life. Second, it's not like homes don't appreciate at all. They're still going to appreciate as we pointed out in this video, but maybe just a little bit slower than they usually would. Third, if you buy a home in a great neighborhood, it could be an opportunity to network and connect with other like-minded neighbors. Perhaps those neighbors have kids that get along with your kids, or perhaps having that home assigns you to a certain school district that is better in the area. In life, I found that so many things happen due to the connections that you know, rather than the merit that you might bring. And so unfortunately, that is a sad truth of life. It's not what you know, but it's who you know. Oftentimes, the people that are least qualified might get an opportunity or position simply due to the fact that they knew somebody at the right place at the right time. And lastly, another benefit of owning a home is that perhaps you could actually write off some of the mortgage interest payments from your overall income. That's definitely dependent on your tax situation on if you can take more in itemized deductions versus standard deductions. But still, it's definitely a factor that you might need to consider. All right, and the last reason, the last last reason that I really think that it's good is that you can't panic sell a house, like I said earlier. If you can't liquidate your house in just a few clicks, then you're likely to stay the course and actually build wealth through your own home. All right, what do you guys think? Do you think that buying a home is still worth it? Are there any benefits or cons that I missed? Let me know down in the comments. Check out my next video right here. It's going to be renting versus buying a home. And that's the video I mentioned a little bit earlier. So I will see you guys in that video or a future video on this channel. Thank you. Peace. Okay, I'm a little allergic because of a dog that was at the master's party, so. That's a big one. My eyes are so puffy.